we have 300, around 300 scientists now, um, and those scientists are all actively researching in the field of plastic pollution. Plastic pollution has, for, for, for obvious reasons, become a real hot topic for academics and scientists around the world um, because they re recognise how hazardous and problematic it, it is, um, how unjust and, and the impacts that it has for, for all communities, for all of us. Uh, the science is important because um, plastics are really very, very complex. Um, they are a complex mix of chemicals. There's a new report coming out that suggests there are 16,000 chemicals in plastics. Um, and we know very little about many of those, but we do know that there's a, a substantial amount of those that are indeed toxic. Um, and we need to reduce those and we need to make sure that they're essential and we need to transition from more to toxic chemicals to safer ones. So data around that is going to be very important. But data around things like, you know, what are the better polymers? What are, you know, what are the, um, what are the alternative um, systems, the zero waste plastic free systems that we should be moving towards and the materials as well. There are also human rights issues. Um, social and economic impacts of plastic pollution and challenges to be considered um, and policy implications. So we need um, the best expertise all along. And between those big, big meetings where everybody gathers together to negotiate the treaty, um, there are also a whole bunch of, of, of meetings in between. Um, and there's working groups in those meetings. They have to get a lot of work done so we actually get a treaty finished uh, on time. Um, and so we're, what we're proposing to do in these intersessional working groups is to gather together the best scientists, best experts, to work on things like assessment criteria, to, to basically to assess the hazardousness, for example, of chemicals, to assess um, polymers, um, those building blocks of plastics, um, to assess plastic products, you know, are they safe? Are they essential? Um, are they sustainable? And also the technologies involved as well, so it's production, extraction technologies. Those assessment criteria are going to be very important for all of those things, including systems and services. So we're going to need baseline data, as you're suggesting, and we're going to need to ensure that we have the right targets for plastic production reduction, those global aggregate plastic production reduction targets, um, so global and also national. I'm talking about multidisciplinary researchers from the natural sciences all the way to the social sciences, economic experts, perhaps even political studies experts and so forth. Um, those who have maybe citizen scientists, indigenous scientists, local experts. So it's much broader than you might think uh, of, you know, an expert panel would be or scientific panel will be beyond academia. The most important thing is that we have a very, very robust conflict of interest declaration and process to ensure that our scientists are not, um, let's just say for want of a better term, in bed with the uh, plastic pollution, in, you know, polluting industry, to the point where they are unable to, um, I guess, behave as critic in conscience and to provide um, sound um, uh, scientific outputs um, those need to be independent of whoever might fund them, for example. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of people here in Nairobi, a lot of organisations and individuals who um, are working closely with uh, member state delegations. Having some more input and perhaps advice and support from home is always, always welcome to uh, perhaps provide further evidence um, or an argument, um, local expertise again that may be emitted from what, what's uh, some of the deliberations here um, to take those to those delegations who are the ones who are negotiating for this treaty. These chemicals and plastics have intergenerational and transgenerational impacts on gene mutation, for example, but also the intergenerational impacts of, you know, the environmental impacts on, um, on all of us, um, particularly considering that plastics are transboundary. They don't just stay in one jurisdiction. Um, they move around, they move around the globe in, in atmospheric flows, in, in tidal flows, and in, in freshwater riverine flows. So um, it's for everybody. If it's, if it's as effective as we're hoping it will be, if it's strong, as strong as we're hoping it will be, um, 
then then we will be we will be serving to protect people and planet for future generations to come.